welcome back to dark cinema recaps where today i've got a gory treat for you all right so we're going to be taking a look at the 2006 the film that features horror royalty all right we've got the candy man we've got jason we've got freddy we got 2006's hatchet all right and if you enjoy this recap please please stab the like button as hard as you can because it genuinely helps us out let me know in the comment section because i can guarantee it's going to be later than you think and it's going to be revealed at the end what friday film did kane hodder first appear as jason because everybody thinks he's been in it from day dot and he hasn't it came on a lot later than you think all right so in a cold open to hunters samson robert england and his son ashley are fishing while the alligator hunting in a swamp swamp during a full moon ainsley says he has to take a piss and samson rows the boat to shore while ainsley's urinating samson falls silent ainsley goes to see where he is and finds samson's mutilated body he grabs his harpoon only to be murdered by a monstrous being during Mardi Gras, a celebration in downtown New Orleans, there is a group of friends, including Ben and his best friend Marcus, who have come up to have some fun since Ben's girlfriend of eight years has recently dumped him. Ben decides to go on a haunted swamp tour, and Marcus reluctantly agrees to go with him. The two find that the tour is closed because the guide, Rev Zombie, which is only Tony fucking Todd, by the way, was sued for negligence. Rev Zombie suggests that they try a place further down the street, owned by the over-the-top, inexperienced tour guide, Sean. Marcus decides to leave, but changes of mind upon seeing two topless girls, Misty and Jenna, with their sleazy talent director, Shapira. Ben pays for himself and Marcus, and Sean leads him to the tour bus, where the other tourists, Jim and Shannon Pometio, a Minnesota couple who are honestly, like, incredible as well. They are just, like, so perfect for this film. And the quiet, hot-tempered Mary Beth are waiting. Ben tries to make friends with Mary Beth, who rejects him, while Marcus takes a liking to Jenna. Sean doesn't know what he's doing, which the others realize as soon as he arrives at the swamp. Shapiro has Misty and Jenna strip, strip down and film a scene for Bayou Beavers, which I'm sure is a classy affair, as everyone boards the boat. A homeless swamp dweller warns them away from the swamp now firstly let's talk about the louisiana bayou for a second criminally underrated because it's like a character in itself in this film because harbinger of doom just a throwback to the friday films you're all doomed yeah th <laughs> this film it's like i said it knows it knows what it is sean leads them through the swamplands past abandoned houses including one where victor crowley kane hodder a deformed creature lived Sean mentions one night Victor's dad goes crazy and whacks him in the face with a hatchet. While looking at ghost lights, Shannon sees something in the trees. Sean accidentally crashes the rock, sinking the boat. To reach land, they must walk across a broken tree. Jim is bitten on the leg by an alligator, making him, Misty and Shapiro all fall into the water. They reach shore and run to safety, whilst Jim bleeds profusely. They realize that Sean is not a tour guide, he is just a college student looking for money. Mary Beth takes out a gun that she brought and informs him that her father and brother, Samson and Ainley, who were in the cold open, disappeared while fishing nearby, presumably at Crowley's hands. She then tells them the real story of Victor Crowley. Long ago, presumably in the 1940s to 1960s, Crowley was a deformed boy who was kept hidden from the world by his father. One Halloween, a group of kids decided to scare Victor by throwing fireworks into his house, but the house engulfed in flames. Victor's father tried to hack down the door with a hatchet to save Victor, but because Victor was pressed up <clears throat> against the other side of the door trying to get out, he hit him in the face with the hatchet, killing him. Victor's father died of a broken heart ten years later. Mary Beth believed Victor roams the swamp as a vengeful spirit, killing anyone who enters. Victor mostly kills people near his house, which they are currently standing right in front of. Shannon becomes infuriated with how scared everyone is and decides to help her husband into the house. 
Victor emerges and kills the Permetios. Now, Shannon's death in this film, like, is incredible, all right? Even Kane Hoddett has described it as one, it's, as his favorite kill. It is actually better than what he thinks the sleeping bag scene was from Friday New Blood. It's fucking amazing, this kill is. I love it, and it's probably in my top five favorite kills of all time. Incredible. After the struggle snuggle, Mary Beth shoots Victor, but only makes him fall. While running away, Shapiro is separated from the others and is killed by Victor. The others find Shapiro's body. Mary Beth suggests that they return to the Crowley house to get weapons and all six of them go to the house. Jenna, Sean, Marcus and Misty stand guard while Mary Beth and Ben go into the shed and get weapons, but find Samson and Ainsley's bodies inside. Ben comforts Mary Beth and they grab a shovel and a pitchfork while the others are scared by noises in the bushes. Jenna is killed by Victor as Mary Beth and Ben arrive with the weapons. Mary Beth hits Victor with a shovel making him fall and gets stabbed with a pitchfork by Ben. Sean reaches for the shovel but Victor grabs it first, chopping off Sean's leg with it, then decapitating him whilst the others flee. The survivors decide to lure Victor back into his house and set him on fire with gasoline tanks in the shed. They return to the house and Ben goes into the shed to retrieve a gasoline tank while Misty stands guard and Mary Beth and Marcus act as bait to lure Victor in. Mary Beth and Marcus discover that Misty is missing and her head and torso are being thrown onto Ben by Victor. Ben finds a tank and throws it all over Victor while Mary Beth and Marcus set fire to him. Honestly, for like a budget film, one of the best fire stunts of all time. I don't think Kane Hodder is allowed to be in a film without at some point just being set on fire. God, I love that man. But it begins to rain and the fire is extinguished. The three begin running through a cemetery and find the gate locked. Ben is tackled by Victor, who spits up blood in his face before he's dragged to safety. They start running away, but Marcus is grabbed by Victor and killed. Victor grabs a gate pole and chases Ben and Mary Beth, throwing it into Ben's foot. Mary Beth bends the pole until it's pointed at Victor, who impales himself upon it. Ben and Mary Beth board Samson's boat to head out. Mary Beth is snared by seaweed and pulled underwater. She sees Ben's arm sticking into the water for her to grab, but it is pulled, on, pulled up by Victor, who is holding a dying Ben's severed forearm. The film ends with Victor, Victor holding her screaming. Oh my goodness, this film. I genuinely, genuinely love it. I hadn't seen this film in years, and I was just kind of having to flick through. Like When we come to do recaps, we kind of it's a bit of much of a random number generator game. And I saw the hatch and I was thinking, you know what, I haven't seen that film in so long. I remember this film came out when I was like 16 and I saw it and I kind of thought then, yeah, it was great, but it's on a budget. But to watch it again with knowing a lot more about how practical effects work and how, how much more different things go into it, instead of it just being a dumb fun slasher, it is a dumb fun slasher with expertise behind it. And it is, like I said, it's, there is nothing about this film I don't like. I honestly don't. Shapiro's character... In, yeah it's a bit sleazy it screams mid 2000s where like just the complete just how the nudity is but again that's really nothing new in slasher films and i love it it's got an all-star cast it's got good characters it doesn't take itself too seriously the kills are amazing and honestly i absolutely love it and to answer the trivia at the start of the video what was kane hodder's first appearance in a friday film it was actually part seven, New Blood, the carry one, where we Jason up against a telekinesis kid. Yeah, that one's it's not my favorite, but it was the debut of Kane Hodder. Now, it's since been brought to my attention that Hatchet had two direct sequels 
under Victor Crowley dedicated spin-off, I believe. So this has got a bit of a franchise going. We'll see how this is done. We've got some requests to go over and do. But honestly, like, I watched this film last weekend and I was like, oh my god, it is amazing. And I really, really want to talk about it. I really want to do a recap of it. And I really want to talk about how good this film is. So, yeah, Hatchet 2006. Chef's kiss, man. I love this film. You can't dog on budget slasher films, man, because this is a budget slasher with heart, soul, and just pure expertise behind it. And honestly, it's fucking brilliant.